All right, so up next as a fun fleet is my current favorite boss fleet and to a degree PVP fleet. Now the chat gave this one the name of Stun and Done, and honestly, I really do like this name. It fits really, really well for what it does, and well, I mean, let's go ahead and take a look and see how that applies. I do want to remind everyone that these videos may not necessarily focus on meta-based fleets. These fleets can be also extremely gimmicky and may not work in a lot of situations. These fleets could be completely based on a playstyle you may or may not even like. But at the end of the day, what matters is whether or not you want to develop these and use them is entirely up to you. They might give a nice change of pace or even give you guys something different to try out for fun. Now, with that out of the way, let's break down this fleet formation. Sun and Dun mostly focuses on its backline. This current setup that I like to use uses Formidable, Enterprise, and Shoho. For now, let's look at the fleet's gimmick ship, Formidable. Now, Formidable's strength comes from both her skills and loadout. Her being able to equip a lot of torpedo bombers and even a dive bomber instead of a fighter allows for some pretty solid surface DPS. But her skills also support her in being able to do some additional serious damage. Now, first things first, her red skill, Supporting Wings, does a few things. The first being that her aviation is increased by up to 15%, and thus that gives her planes even more damage output. If she has one or more Fairy Albacore equipped as well, those planes get an increased efficiency for up to 15% in that respective slot. The jumpers efficiency and the aviation boost will help out a lot with damage output, even if the Albacores are technically not the best plane in the Torpedo Bomber slot. I generally only run one Albacore and go, go with a more damage-focused Torpedo Bomber on the other slot, just so that way I can have some pretty solid damage output with her Torpedo Bombers. The last bit of the skill procs when launching an airstrike in combat. Unless fully upgraded, the skill has a chance as low as 70% to launch an additional set of Albacore planes to protect the enemy. If they do strike an enemy, there is an 80% chance of causing flooding on the target for 9 seconds, leading to, well, more free damage. The skill overall just gives Formidable even more ways to deal damage, which starts to add up, kind of like how Saratoga works to a degree, to be honest. Now one last thing I do want to mention about this, since equipping an Albacore will increase the efficiency, people have been putting that plane in the weakest efficiency slot of the Torpedo Bombers. Anyway, onto her yellow skill, Don't Move an Inch, which is our main influencer for this formation. When launching an airstrike, all enemies will have their speed reduced to zero for up to one and a half seconds. After that, they will slowly regain their speed over the next two and a half seconds. It's an important note here that the first airstrike is guaranteed to proc the skill. Afterwards though, you'll have up to an 80% chance for the skill to proc again. While this skill sounds like it won't do much for players, there is a lot of power in this skill. Since enemies cannot move, or slowly move for the duration of the skill, this provides us with a timing advantage and can allow us to line up easy hits against enemies. Now, <laughs> lumbering jokes aside, there is a lot of potential that one can tap into with this ability, and we'll get into that a bit later. Lastly though, her blue skill, Armored Hanger, is a nice defensive skill to work with. The skill has two parts as well. The first reduces Formidable's damage taken by up to 8%. A decent damage reduction is never a bad thing, especially for a heavy armor carrier. The second half of the skill activates upon launching an airstrike. When it's launched, Formidable will decrease the damage taken for all other main fleet ships by up to 8% for 10 seconds. This defensive skill is a nice form of damage control, but once again, not the major focus of a fleet. Moving on to our other carriers, next up is Enterprise, a well-known carrier who shines with her skill Lucky E. This skill carries up to a 70% proc chance that activates when releasing an airstrike. If it's activated, the airstrike does double damage and Enterprise is immune to enemy attacks for 8 seconds. Now, the double damage aspect of the skill is what makes her capable of dishing out some serious damage to her adversaries. The evasion is great for survival, but it's an important thing here to note that ramming damage is the only way she'll continue to take damage despite being invulnerable. As for my last pick carrier, Shoho Retrofit has two skills at her disposal. Shoho is a solid vanguard healer carrier to work with but should not be underestimated in her ability to deal damage to enemies. As for her skills, a support carrier is a healing skill that heals the vanguard for up to 8% of their max HP when launching an airstrike. This skill is a nice addition, but not the main focus of the fleet again. Her retrofit skill, air support, is a skill that procs on releasing an airstrike. 
This skill will increase the aviation of every carrier and light carrier in the fleet by up to 15%. However, Shoho will not gain the benefits of this skill. Quite the team player, isn't she? Granted, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of substitutions for carriers to work with instead of Enterprise and or Shoho. These two are just what I've been using for the longest time. So, that's all I can really say about that. I know Centaur and Shinono are pretty good alternatives to work with if one has them. So, it really comes down to the way that you want to particularly build this one. Feel free to tinker around with some of the other carriers that you can bring with Formidable. However, the most important thing is that both ships with Formidable must have Ryusei planes. Normally, Ryusei just aren't used, uh, but they can devastate targets with just the sheer amount of damage they can do. Now, I know, Ryusei bombers use Sakura Empire torpedoes, which converge on the target and will likely miss if they move. However, what happens if the target can't move? And this is where you see Formidables don't move an inch coming into play. With enemies unable to move, the Ryusei now become guaranteed hits on their target. If combined with Shoho's air support aviation buff and Enterprise's attacks doing double damage, you can see how this team becomes a bit of a force to reckon with. Now, just this team alone, we can already see some pretty nasty results. A good number of the bosses I've fought usually get nuked very quickly. It's kind of like you blink and you miss it, to be completely honest with you. It really is surprising how stupidly powerful this fleet is when it comes to surface damage against a single target. Now, I am more than certain that you could find even more terrifying results with other sh ships on play alongside Formidable. This is why I think it'd be perfectly fine for people to go and explore and tinker a bit and find combinations that work really well. Now, before we start diving into how effective this fleet is, let's quickly talk about the Vanguard real quick. I really don't have any set Vanguards for this particular fleet formation, you can use just about anybody, but I will at least mention that there are several Vanguard members that really do help out with this formation. We've got Cleveland and Helena. Both of them provide a seriously good support with their damage buffs that they can do for your team. Just know that both of them are on a timer, so you may have to hold on to your airstrikes a bit until their skills proc to maximize the damage output they can give you. My other character I like using is Yugure Retrofit from the Sakura Empire. With her retrofit, she can buff carriers, giving them up to a 15% more damage output as long as she's standing. Now those are just the three ships that I can mention for now, but I'm more than sure you can find plenty to add on to this fleet instead, like Baltimore or Sirius, if you have them. Nonetheless, have fun with the characters you have for this particular formation to work with. Now, back to what we're talking about with fleet effectiveness. It's a lot of damage these characters can do, but is it unrivaled? Eh, no. See, while its strong point can be its sheer surface damage, it's reliant on a lot of factors. The first is that it has one pretty big weakness, the lack of powerful anti-plane capabilities. Now my particular setup has this issue, and on all honesty, you can adjust it by bringing a different set of carriers along with you, or you could do what I like to do normally and just bring San Diego with you. She solves a lot of that problem. Even with her in the vanguard, the formation immediately ran into a wall upon entering chapter 13 and was quickly defeated. Now another major issue can come from the weapon modifiers. It's a well known thing that each weapon has different modifiers for the type of armor it is used against. These modifiers determine how much damage the weapons do to a particular target. Heavy armors can easily fall to torpedo bombers, but light armors don't take as much damage. So you can struggle against lighter armor types if that's the type of enemy you're up against, so it's important to pay attention to that. Now the lack of defense from a battleship in your backline can also cause a good amount of issues. If your vanguard isn't strong enough to take out all threats along the way, well, your backline's gonna take a lot more damage than you probably would like it to. Lastly, there is a bit of RNG in play with the backline, so there is a chance 
Even if it's not as likely, Enterprise are forbidden not procking their skills upon releasing an airstrike, both of which severely hamper the DPS of your team. As for PvP, it's definitely not meta. <laughs> definitely not. However, I will say with the carrier rework that was done recently, I am seeing a lot more wins than I used to. Uh, it is absolutely hilarious knowing the fact that for the most part, while you may not win the match, you're definitely taking out whatever vanguard they have. But again, for all of its strengths, it can easily be crushed for a lot of the problems I've mentioned before. Overall, this team is pretty decent to use for a decent majority of the game. While it may do a lot of damage, its shortcomings and disadvantages can cause a lot of headache upon reaching the later chapters like Chapter 13. Despite all that, it is still insanely fun to watch how destructive this team can be. I'm sure many of you have some fun combos in mind that you'd like to try with this gimmick, and feel free to let me know how those go. But nonetheless, that'll be all for this particular fleet formation video. Hope you enjoyed it and that it will bring some spins to your gameplay. Now, whether you're a regular viewer or a patron supporting the channel on Patreon, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys all again real soon.